we here at Game 8 find alternative history fascinating. So picture this. An alternative version of the French Revolution where the entire city is overrun with automatons. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Well, that's the premise of this new Souls-like, Steel Rising. With its fast-paced combat and very steampunk-esque style, let's see if this game brings its own spin on the Souls-like genre. With that being said, we've only played a few hours of the game, so we haven't really seen most of what it has to offer. The game takes place in an alternate universe of Paris during the 1789 French Revolution. The city has been overrun by automatons that were under the King of France at the time, which is Louis XVI. Guards? Or oh, jailers? They won't even let us leave this room, Gabrielle. You play as Aegis, a bodyguard automaton of the Queen Mary Antoinette. She gives you a mission to find out what is happening to the city and hopefully find a way to stop all these automatons roaming the streets. There are a few customization options for Aegis after the first cutscene, which really allows you to make her the way you want to. And with that, we are thrust into the world of Steel Rising. The gameplay of Steel Rising is your typical Souls-like game. There is the stamina-based combat, a sort of bonfire system which also respawns to enemies, and the healing system where the consumables replenish after resting at the checkpoints. Let's go over each one of these points. The combat is the bread and butter of the game. At the start, you're able to pick from four starting classes to choose from. Each of them have their own unique playstyle and stats that help you start the game with some weapons that highlight each class's unique playstyle. You can go aggressive with the Dancer class that has Blade and Fans, which also acts as a shield. Or you can go as a Soldier class which has a Halberd that also doubles as a gun. You are given multiple weapons and tools to make short work of other enemy automatons. Each weapon does feel unique, and all have their own special ability tied to it. As you progress through the game, you'll come across more gear for you to switch up your playstyle. From dual swords that make you unleash a flurry of slashes, to a ball and chain that can be infused with fire. There are also some weapons that allow you to go on the offensive with a counter attack after a perfect parry. Pulling some of these moves off can get satisfying and would really do some damage to the enemy. There is a weapon for any playstyle you can think of. Although for us here, the combat did feel a little floaty at times. The dodging does its job well enough, but sometimes it just doesn't feel too tight, especially for a game that really focuses on the usual dodge and hit type gameplay. There were also some times where our character gets stuck in random parts of the environment. The enemies, although vary, do tend to just tank every hit you make, and it feels like there isn't much of a response when hitting them. The game for the most part boils down to just doing hit and runs until the enemy has been defeated. This is very apparent when you go up against some of the tougher enemies. It is mostly just a dance of managing your stamina while waiting for your chance to strike. Speaking of managing your stamina, the game has an interesting way of allowing you to be more aggressive when fighting enemies. The game has a mechanic called Rapid Cooling, which allows you to instantly restore your stamina if you press the Activate button in just the right time. Although if you do this too much, you'll end up with frost damage which will cause your character to freeze up. So you really need to know when to use Rapid Cooling as it's a high risk high reward mechanic. As you explore more of the game, you'll come across these things called Vestals. This acts as this game's version of the bonfire system from the Souls games. Here you are able to level up your character and upgrade your weapons with Anima Essence. And just like the Souls games, you're able to restore your consumables by resting here too. Just be careful as this also makes all enemies in the area respawn. You will also respawn in the last Vestal you rested in if you are defeated in battle. It is also here that you're able to unlock more module slots, if you have enough module keys that is. These slots allow you to equip modules that all have very different effects on the Aegis. Modules are a way to really give you more of an edge in battles, as these upgrades allow you to buff certain parts of the Aegis, from shortening the cooldown of the rapid cooling to just being able to increase your health. You'll find more of these upgrades the more you explore the game. For the visuals of Steel Rising, it is worth noting that this game does have a very heavy system requirements on the PC version, with a minimum GPU requirement of an RTX 2060, Lower end PCs might have trouble running this game. We were barely able to run it outside of the low setting. Although the game looked very visually pleasing even at the low setting, the way the streets look very deserted due to automatons prowling the street really gives off a sense of unease while you explore more of Paris. As for the sounds of the game, for us it did feel a bit empty at times. The weapons do have a really cool and heavy sounding effects to them, and really lack some impact especially since we were fighting enemies made of metal. Some of the sound effects also don't really seem to match what is happening in the game, like this cannon fire for example. 
it just makes a faint thud in the background. We were expecting a bigger explosion sound, but it's just a small thud. To sum it all up, the game is your typical Souls-like game. The atmosphere and setting of the game is pretty unique, as being able to explore an alternate version of Paris feels fun and interesting. All the mechanics found in the game are things you can usually find in Souls games. From the stamina management type combat system, to the bonfire mechanic which also respawns the enemies. It does feel like there isn't really much that sets it apart from other Souls-like titles. But if these things don't really bother you or if you're just looking for another interesting Souls-like game to try out, Steel Rising is fun enough if you're looking to scratch that Dark Souls itch. So have you guys played Steel Rising? What other Souls games do you want us to cover? Let us know in the comments below! Till then, this is Game 8 Information Station, signing off.